during the week, I know, surprise, I don't just work on Sundays. During the week, I prepare my sermon. And it's not something that I sit down like I used to do with my college term papers and I sit at a table at a desk and I just write. I take the whole week to write my sermons. And on the first day, you'd be surprised, I write nothing. Not because I'm procrastinating, but because I sit and I read the gospel lesson of the week and I just let it, you could say, marinate. And throughout the week, I see if something I come across makes it relevant to what I want to preach on Sunday. And throughout the week, I speak to multiple people, whether they know about it, that I'm doing it on purpose or not, or if I blatantly ask them, what do you think about this? I get people's views and understandings of what the gospel's about. And today, out of all of the days, where the church is, uh, let's say, a little bit more packed than usual, which is a beautiful sight for us to see. I want to make sure that the gospel that we just heard is understood. And so, throughout the whole week, I asked, what is Palm Sunday? Why do we celebrate Palm Sunday? And you'd be surprised at a lot of the different answers I got, which is interesting. Um, many different interpretations of what Palm Sunday is about. That's okay. But we hear in today's gospel what really happened. We hear that Jesus, being in Bethany six days beforehand, raised Lazarus from the dead with these few words, Lazarus, come out, showing his authority to the world that he is not just some person, he's not just some prophet, that he is God himself, that he could raise people from the dead. And to prove it, he raised Lazarus. Now, Lazarus wasn't just the three days, the symbolic three days. It was four whole days. He waited. And when he, that even happened, people were like, Jesus, I don't know if you want to do that. It's going to smell bad. It's been four days. He didn't say anything other than open the tomb. And then he said to the tomb, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus, still in his wraps, in his ceremonial wraps that they had put on, comes out. The crowd that was at Palm Sunday was not just these people who witnessed this, but how fast the word got out to everybody that wanted to see, one, they wanted to see Jesus as he had done this miracle, but they wanted almost the same proof, the sight, the vision, the witness to Christ's power. And we need to know this, why? Because throughout the week, I'm asking, what's Palm Sunday? Why do we celebrate Palm Sunday? So we understand that Christ came and made his entrance, but he came, and as we hear, we hear the people saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna, the King of Israel. Many commentaries, the next step of our gospel preparation is to read up on what commentaries have said, what the church fathers might have said about this. So we have that, and we have those resources. So I read through those the next time. Now all of the commentaries, except for a couple, reference about how the entrance was made and how important it was and how humble it was. And then I came across a resource, a sermon series that was made by Father, Stephen Andrew, Father Andrew Stephen Damick. And it wasn't until I read this sermon series that I understood during the week, I was actually asking the wrong question. I was asking, why do we celebrate Palm Sunday? What I really should have been asking for is who? And in this last part of the sermon series, he asks the question, who is God? And in that question, we find why Palm Sunday is important to us. And he says, with the question, who is God? He answers, God is our King. The triumphal entry of Christ coming into Jerusalem 
is the entry, not of a humble servant as many commentaries say, which of course he has another sermon that says that as well, but it's not discounting it, it's emphasizing the entrance. It's emphasizing that God is our king and that we sometimes lose sight in that humility of what's really happening here. So yes, Christ came on a donkey. Yes, he came and people were throwing palms and, and their clothes and everything that they had. But this was the entrance of a conquering king. In the days back then, and he goes into this historic aspect of what kings and emperors and generals used to do when they had just conquered or won a war, they would come in with their chariots, the musicians, they would come in with slaves, with captives, they would come in with this massive army, they would come in with everything that was the top of the top, the best of the best. And what this procession was called was actually called a triumph. So we see all of these different things that this used to be done historically speaking. And they used to do this massive entrance to show that whoever this is, this general, this new emperor, whoever it might be, is someone to be reckoned with, is someone who will now, they will have to submit as their new emperor. And part of this triumph process after the procession is this proclamation that's made. And it's actually called Evangelion, which is a Greek word. So we went there. And what it means is it means the good news. And it means the good news because there's something new that's happening. There's a restart button that happens here. With every new emperor, with every new general, there's a new way of doing things. And so this aspect of this triumph was also included. And he gave all of this historic detail for a reason. And I'm going to read to you what he has says in his sermon series. He says, Jesus Christ is entering into Jerusalem in a show of force. Though it is not a force of physical violence, it is the show of force seen in today, the power of God, which only changes the hearts of men and women. He enters Jerusalem with his soldiers, with their armor and weapons. But for Christ, they're not the violence. These are fishermen. And they are armed not with swords and spears, but with the word of God. And they are protected not with armor, but with faith. Jesus Christ is entering into Jerusalem with his captives in chains and humiliation of bondage. But his captives are not people, but Hades, Satan, and death. Jesus Christ is entering into Jerusalem with every intention of becoming a king, but rather not the king of a little area, the king of all. And the world will bow to the one whose kingdom shall have no end. Jesus Christ is entering into Jerusalem with the proclamation of his evangelion, his good news, his gospel. The conquering king has come, and we listen closely to the words of his evangelion. And what does he expect of us? As we said, with a new emperor comes a brand new world, becomes a brand new kingdom. And in this gospel, and in his evangelion, we hear of all of this what new world is going to be. However, there are things that he expects of us, and those are also said within here. He expects us to follow him on this way of the cross, to take up our cross and follow him. He says in his gospel, to love the Lord with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, all of our body, all of our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. He says all of these things of which any regular person, if I were to ask, what are something that Jesus might have taught us throughout his gospel? What would that would have been? You can give and list off a couple of things. No, anyone with just basic knowledge knows these things. But it's different to list them off than actually do them. We are now given this opportunity, hearing a new evangelion, to change the way we think, 
to change the way we do things. So when we think of what does Palm Sunday mean to us, I'm sure not many people have actually asked themselves that question. So if you haven't, I want you to take the time to think what does Palm Sunday mean to us? Why is it relevant? Why is it one of the times of the year where the church is jam-packed full of people? Why? Because Christ comes into Jerusalem and changes the world. And on a smaller scale, maybe on a, not a smaller scale, on a more personal level, on Palm Sunday, we are reminded that Christ has to come into our lives so that he can rule us, so that maybe when we listen to the gospel, we actually do what he said. There are many times where we listen and we come to church and we hear the same gospel lessons over and over and over again. But what do we do with them? These simple things, like loving our neighbor as yourself. Sometimes we don't do it. Sometimes we allow for things to happen within our lives and we don't take the gospel lesson home with us. That's why Father Samson and Father Athanasius, we give these challenges to you all. Because it's not just about what happens here on Sundays. It's a major part of who we are as Orthodox Christians. But we aren't at the church every single day. We could be. We should be. But we're not there yet. We have to establish where we are. And at this moment, we remember Jesus Christ coming into Jerusalem. And on our personal level, the way we make this applicable in our lives, Christ coming into our lives. So that hopefully, with these lessons, we can change who we are and become better people, become better Orthodox Christians, and strive for that. Because this kingdom that we now live in, that we've all been baptized into, is one that never ends. And we have to strive for that relationship. We have to now make that our challenge for this Palm Sunday to allow Christ to enter into our lives and to make the difference in them, be Him being a ruler. And if we do that, we will truthfully enter into that kingdom that he has now ruled for us and wants us to be in. But that choice is for us to make. Amen.